It is Tuesday, the 7th of May, Point Blank Yvumbi, PBE Daily. This is the second segment of today's podcast, and today was a good one. I I started the morning on a very like low note, depending on the stuff. If you listen to the previous episode, a lot was going on. I had to handle it. It was handled, thank God. Thank God for a good caretaker who knows what his job is. I finished that, and I get to the office... I was pumped. Uh, there were certain shots of animation I was really holding back being able to do them because I, it, it was a test for me. I, I wasn't certain if I was going to be able to pull off drawing them properly. So I've always postponed shots which I'm second guessing myself. And this morning when I was going through the storyboard looking at the shots I'm supposed to go because I, I make lists of everything that's required like single character animations, double character animations. I look at the load of work that would be within a shot and I decide how quickly I can get it out of the way to make sure it looks good and it's crisp and everything and today was good I pulled off a couple of shots and I'm very happy about that so we're chugging along we're we're, we're doing great we were still on the history books as far as the listenership I was on and today it kind of tied back to a lot of stuff I was listening to previously and stuff I've been watching of late and the, the thing I want to talk about right now is like the power of the kind of words that people use to enforce what they are. By that I mean this. The power of the written word is underrated and I think we really should take time to appreciate how far it's come. Three characters come to mind and they were all born off of the, the audio the audio book which is still Andrew Marr's History of the World and a couple of TV shows I've watched. There's one TV show called AD. It was on Netflix and AD was basically the death of Christ and the period leading up to the death of Christ. And the character who really stood out as, as far as his performance was concerned was a guy who played Saul or later known as St. Paul. Now Saul was a scholar. He's going to get a tad bit religious but we're going to take it in the historical element because even in the book they take it based upon historical information that they've got. So these are more allegations or there could be fact in there. Historians, bear with me. I'm just a layman who's trying to tie strings to the things he's trying to understand. Now, the character Saul, he persecuted believers of of Jesus Christ very aggressively. A lot of people were, were punished as a result of it by Rome because he respected Rome. And as a scholar, he studied both Greek and he was very he was very okay with what Roman society looked like. Now, Saul, upon his uh, awakening to becoming a Christian, he felt guilty for all that he did and decided to go the extra mile to make sure he truly makes up for the lives lost and the martyrs he created based upon his his lack of understanding of the faith that was the faith in Jesus Christ. And according to the history book, His historical relevance is this. By him being able to speak Greek and being a person who was a scholar of Greek and different languages, he was able to move Christianity into Europe very, very easily. Because of his understanding of these languages, he would easily pass the message to the people. And that's very relevant. So... By his ability to write this stuff and speak this stuff, it it moved further into Europe. Now, Europe, when it got got up there, when Christianity got up there, it didn't really fare so well because of the plagues and the different passings of people. And I'm a sucker for Renaissance art and the reawakening of and resurgence of the different arts that existed up there. But when I found out why it was a reawakening and all that, I like how the art looks, but sometimes I feel sorry for what they had to go through for the art to look the way it looked. Now... Further into the future, as far as that is concerned, the second character that comes to mind is Martin Luther. And I don't mean King Jr. The civil rights thing that was a couple of days back, that's, that's in the past. Now we're talking about Martin Luther, the first time that name actually comes up in history. He's a Germanic scholar, and his drive and convictions were very, very strong. I, I mean, at first he was practicing law, but then... Like he was learning law, I believe. Um, again, I'm not a historian. I'm just working with the stuff that I've been binging on recently. So 
taking all the information he's got, gotten from that. Now, Martin Luther is told maybe you should practice the faith and maybe learn something about the faith and all that comes with it. And Catholicism was big at the time. Unchallenged, probably the strongest faith in the world to the people who were consuming it. Martin Luther starts studying and he studied with like a fever and fire that could not be controlled. He was really into it. He really dove deep, tried to understand everything being said, tried to make sure he represented everything that was coming out and everything that was being put across to him. He starts seeing this prevalence of certain pieces of information and, and, and papers being sold to people that felt a lie. And the paperwork was indulgences. Indulgences Indulgences were documents where you could buy them from a priest and it would allow you freedom to do whatever kind of sin that you have because you've bought yourself the license to commit the sin. And his understanding of the books that he was reading were, well, you can't really do that because a priest can't tell you if you've sinned or not. It's God who's going to judge you in the end. So how can a priest encourage you to commit more sin? And at that time, the literacy was very minimal because most people were farmers. They didn't really need to learn how to read because I'll just go to Sunday for the priests to give me the information and I'll get my sermon for the day. And this sat very poorly with Martin Luther because it was like I need people to be able to speak and read their, on their own because if it's a it's a journey of knowing of self and faith doesn't it require you to read the book as well why should a priest be the only guy in a village who could read the book and it bugged him and in time Martin Luther wrote his own translation of the Bible and he used the most simple form of Germanic uh, writing to put the point across and it's one of the first few times where the translation of the Bible pops up uh, I think King James was working on his version in the in, in England at the time and one of the Scot King, Scottish kings of England and he was working on his version at the same time but his translation was the simplest Germanic and everybody could have access to it because Martin Luther had another advantage it was the time when the printing press was coming to life he was able to put out his pronouncements and put out his information to every single person in the world, who, in, the, in the Germanic world, who could understand it. And remember, Germany wasn't a unified country at the time, so if you spoke the language in its simplest form, you could get away with it. It was the perfect way to put the word of the Lord across. And he was a guy who was very argumentative, and he did a lot of debates against pre people who worked for the priesthood. And the Pope at the time was a member of the Medici family, but that's, we'll touch on that another day. Now that's Martin Luther third character I'm putting into this fold is Helen White or Helen G. White. I grew up uh, in the doctrine of the Seventh-day Adventist Church and here's what you need to know about what that doctrine is. From the jump, what my understanding is we're preparing ourselves for the second coming of Christ. Now by me saying we is I still hold on to certain parts of those doctrines and I still try to be the best member of the faith that I can be. And the writings of Helen White were the next step from the writings of Martin Luther. Because most people are trying to really diagnose and give them an exact date for the coming of Christ and that's where the falling out happened. We believe it's in the future but it's not a written date or you can't even quantify it mathematically. You just need to focus on preparing yourself for that. Her writings is one of the movements where if you go down any highway leading to upcountry on any side from Nairobi, I guarantee you, you will see the Seventh-day Adventist Church logo. On any highway, anywhere, you'll find that logo. The reason I'm, start, I'm talking about this stuff is the power of the rich and worth is this. She wrote countless books. She never really went to school. These were all inspired writings that she put together. Inspired writings by Ellen White came up with a faith, a, 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 div a division of a faith that helps thousands of people find peace within themselves in this trial world. I mean, the current Supreme Supreme Court uh, Chief Justice is of, of this doctrine. One of the ministers in the country who's truly respected from for how aggressive he is about getting things right is from this doctrine. I mean, I'm not trying to be political, so those are just FYI information. But these three individuals I've just mentioned all use the written word to work to their advantage. Now, I could have written this as a blog. 
I would have put this out there and write it down and just have it be part of those different paragraphs that flows on the internet for different cookies to drive them towards you or not. I could have done that. But since there's different platforms that have come before us and currently one of the platforms is being able to speak my mind on audio, why not share that with you? These, these are some, some of the thoughts that really swirl around my head and why I was so hesitant to do a podcast initially because I'm uncertain of how far I can take it or how far I can speak my truths or the truths I'm trying to find. I am literally walking you guys through a mold of finding of self. And I gotta admit, I enjoy the fact that it's, not, it's out more than in. I don't want to reach a level where it becomes more like I'm being a heretic or I'm trying to speak against power or speak towards power. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to tell you that some guys sitting in an SQ in the, in the comfort of their own space go through a lot of information on their evening walks. They run through this information and they just want to sit down and have this chat. And this chat is a way of just making you think about the little things that exist that we take for granted. One thing about I noticed in the audiobook that I'm listening to, that I'm still listening to is certain expansions of certain countries were because of some things as simple as salt. Like the trade of silks, the trade of, of furs. I mean, Ivan the Terrible, who was considered the father of the greatest expansion of, of Russia, really wanted more salt and more furs, and he pushed the levels of, well, I buy it for the guys in that territory. Why not just take that territory and own where all those animals grow? I mean, they say they mine it over there. Why not just take that territory and mine it over there? If it wasn't for him, a lot of the places where Cold War Russia was trying to test out its bombs and stuff wouldn't, be, wouldn't even be possible. Simple things like salt and fur. Take that into consideration. I mean, the writings of different people moving from time to time helped improve science. And towards the evening before I left the office to come home, Christianity was like the most aggressive fighter of growth of information and sciences as compared to many other faiths. And this stuff is documented. The first guy to really speak on how the world is round, his arrogance did lead to him getting punished for it. But one of the most famous statements he said was, and yet it still goes round. I mean, that's me paraphrasing, but... Christendom did not want its authority challenged by, pro, by moving forward in, te in technology and, and in sciences and medicine. I mean, there's some doctrines of faith right now that still deny people medicine because they believe it's God's will that you got sick and it's God's will to get you to be where you are. I mean, I think it's also God's will to come up with doctors and hospitals. Let's fix that part. Many people want to build libraries when they become billionaires and millionaires. I hope to make a few thousand and build a hospital somewhere. These are just my <laughs> honest opinions and honest crazes, man. I'm, as you can see, like I'm rambling because I'm excited by the amount of information I keep learning every day of the week. And I'm super glad I took the step to make this podcast happen. And as I go and as I learn, I'm going to make more of this stuff come to life. I will share whatever references I can, I can come across with you. I'll, I'll keep you posted on anything else that I find quirky and all that. And... To everybody out there enjoying this, God bless. I'm glad you're enjoying this. In the words of Eddie Griffin, think it ain't illegal yet, but we're working on it. <laughs> Tomorrow morning, we'll do it all over again. And I promise it'll be a little bit lighter. But for now, peace out. Sleep tight. I'm a holla at you. The podcast you just heard was made using Anchor. Ever thought about making your own podcast? Anchor makes it really easy for anyone to get started. It's a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing podcasts. Best of all, it's 100% free. Sign up now at anchor.fm slash new. That's anchor.fm slash new to get started.